Hi, how's that? Okay. Are there any nurses here? Nurses to be? Oh, there are. Okay. Okay. I think I recognize some people. Okay. Um, so my name's Jennifer. I graduated um, from Fairfield in 2001. Um, and I think I do need to say that um, Dr. Farrell and I have been friends since we were 12 years old. <laughs> and we tend to giggle like school children when we're together, so I'm just not going to look her way. <laughs> um, so um, when, I, when I came to Fairfield, uh, and definitely you know, early on, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I was really envious of my peers who had a much clearer um, path uh, than I did. I, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I think like a lot of my um, colleagues here have mentioned, they just sort of did what they loved um, and just sort of uh, immerse themselves in what they enjoyed and let the path kind of be created from that. Um, and that's pretty much what I did. Um, I majored in international studies and Spanish. Um, I love Spanish. I always did. Um, I thought it was really interesting. You could talk to other people um, in front of other people, and they wouldn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> um, I'm trying to instill that in my children, but it's, it's a work in progress. Um, so while I was here, uh, I was heavily involved in the Head Start program over in Bridgeport. Um, I really have to say that it, it, it changed my, my thinking and my path and, and my way of life in many ways. Um, you know, seeing so much poverty so close to affluence really boggled my mind. I, you know, it was my first exposure, I think, to that much diversity. Um, uh, let's see, I also studied abroad in Sevilla, Spain. Um, I loved it. I think it was a great immersion. Um, I met up with Dr. Farrell in Spain. We had some good times. Um, but, you know, I, I would have to say, I would agree, you know, being immersed and living with the family um, really forces you to be uncomfortable. And I think sometimes being uncomfortable really helps you get that foot forward and, and really change in, in many ways. Um, and of course, the university there, the classes were in Spanish. So that was, you know, of course, incredibly helpful um, with improving in language. Um, I also did a mission trip with the um, chapel, uh, not the chapel, the uh, campus ministry, thank you. Um, I did a trip to Tijuana, Mexico, um, and I didn't consider myself like the group translator, but like anytime we were together and we needed to have a conversation with people, they just sort of pushed me in the front and they were like, yeah, yeah, Jen, you go talk to them. So again, I was kind of uncomfortable, but it was, you know, it all worked out, it was fine. So, um, and, I, and I also have to credit Fairfield as a Jesuit university. You know, the whole idea of giving back and working with your community. Um, I don't know if I knew that I was embracing it at the time I was here, but I really was, and I have ever since. Um, so when I left Fairfield, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and so I was looking in New York City to uh, start working. And I saw a job for a foster care agency. And I thought, OK, I used to work with kids. I, I, I could probably do that. Um, and it really it changed my life forever. Um, when they hired me, they said, oh, I see you speak Spanish. You're our, our bilingual caseworker now. And I thought, oh my god, what am I doing? Um, and I'll never forget on my first day, You know, here I am like from Connecticut. Um, they said, OK, here are the trains you need to take to Brooklyn, and you're going to go to the low-income housing. Um, you know, and you need to go do some you know, translating and inter intervention and interviewing with, some, with a Spanish-speaking family. You know, call us if you need any help. And I was just like horrified. Um, but you know, I rose to the occasion, like I think we all do. Um, made my way there. I think it was like three hours late. I kept getting on the express. I kept seeing my stop, as, and I kept going by. And I'm like, why isn't it stopping? I don't understand. Um, you know, it was pitch black, I'm sure. I, ugh. Anyways, it all worked out just fine. Um, and I'd have to say that, you know, the, the, my colleagues at the foster care agency that I worked at, they were incredibly supportive. Um, you know, if you need help, let me know. I, I'm so glad to help you. You can do this. You got this. You know, at no point did I really feel like, you know, I was put on the spot or, you know, I was asked to do anything that, like, really I couldn't do. It's just I really needed to feel confident and comfortable, you know, just doing it. Um, so that, 
that was a big turning point, I think. Um, so while I was working there, I went um, to grad school to get my master's in social work. I loved what I was doing, and I wanted to be better at it. Um, so I did that for a few years while I was working and um, got my master's. And when I got my master's, I went to work for a children's law firm called Lawyers for Children. Um, and there we represented children in foster care, uh, adoption, visitation, and custody cases. And if you were a social worker in New York City, that's where you wanted to be. So I was like, I felt very honored to be there. Um, as you can imagine, the need for the Spanish language continued there. Um, I did a lot more uh, interviewing um, custody uh, particip uh, people that were there for custody cases. I did a lot of interviewing of parents of um, you know infants who, of course, could not be interviewed. Um, I did a lot of home visits, a lot of home assessments, um, interviewing a lot of foster parents, pre-adoptive parents, um, and even um, you know older young people who were coming from another country, you know, to see what it is that they wanted for their plan. So you can imagine the need for Spanish, you know, continued. Um, and so while I was there, I sort of started thinking about career changing. Um, not that I was unhappy, but you know I was starting, you know, starting a family, and I knew that it, that was going to be hard for me to continue with, you know, a family living out in Connecticut. Um, so I started taking some classes in nursing. Um, so I would leave work in the city, and I would come back to Bridgeport, and I would go to school until midnight, and just do the same thing over and over again uh, while I was pregnant. Um, so, uh, you know, and that all started with this conversation with some, some great coworkers, you know, well, what would you do if you had to do it all over? You know, and, um, you know, my father had recently passed away. I spent a lot of time in the hospitals in Boston. And I thought, you know, these people really did a lot and they really helped me, you know, my family, myself, you know, I really respected their work. and. I would, I would love to do that. And my coworker said, well, why don't you? And I said, I, it's too late. I already have my master's. Like, this is just, it's just not going to happen. Um, but then when I sat down and really looked at it, I realized it was a reality. Um, so I, that's what I did. Um, I went uh, back to school full time um, at UConn and Stanford. And then I graduated from nursing school. Um, and then I thought, OK, well, what am I going to do now? Um, so I, there were a few stops along the way, but I ended up uh, in family birthing. Um, I worked at uh, Bridgeport Hospital. I now work at St. Vincent's. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, being in an urban center, uh, there's a great need for other languages, especially Spanish. Um, so I currently am one of two Spanish-speaking staff uh, on the floor. Um, and in addition to the patients that I have, um, I do a lot of translation for doctors. Uh, I do a lot of translation in the NICU because uh, there's a credible amount of teaching uh, new parents. Um, uh, and I kind of help uh, translate for other patients. Now, you know, in the hospitals, they do have a lot of resources for other languages. And most common is a Marty. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, it's essentially like a FaceTime sort of live person on a computer that you interact with. So you hear them, you see them, and you talk to them. And that's what the nurses uh, typically use as their resource for other languages. And it, it is a great resource, but you know nothing can replace the person-to-person -person contact. Um, with that being said, as a social worker, if you're doing an interview, you want to interview your, your client. You don't want to turn to another person and you know have a three-way conversation. So um, back to nursing. So um, it is a resource, but you know it can't replace the one the one on one um, interaction. So when I had the pleasure of uh, visiting Dr. Farrell's class, um, I gave a couple of examples of recent um, interactions I've had with some patients. Um, so one was I was getting ready to leave uh, for the day, and a patient came in in precipitous labor, meaning she was having her baby immediately, like immediately. Um, she came to the desk, was speaking in Spanish, was hysterical, incredibly uncomfortable. Um, and the, my coworker said, I don't, un who, I don't understand. Who are you? What's going on? Um, and I just happened to be walking by. And they said, get the Marty, get the Marty. Well, the Marty was broken. Um, and they said, you know, can you come here for a minute? So, you know, what's your name? You know, she was not known to the hospital. 
Um, she hadn't been coming to our clinic. She just walked in. Um, so they had absolutely no knowledge of her. Um, important things, what's your name? Have you done this before? Do you want something for pain? And do you have allergies? I mean, these are like the basic things that we need to know. Um, so I was able to get those from her. And I stayed with her through her delivery. Now, certainly, she would have been able to deliver her baby not speaking any language. Um, the nurses could have imitated. I'm sure they could have figured it out. And it would have been fine. But it wouldn't have been ideal. And it wouldn't have been the best situation it could have been. So I felt very you know, proud and, and helpful that I could help her manage her delivery. Um, another example is I had um, a patient who had just had a cesarean section. She was a very young teenager who only spoke Spanish um, and had a lot of other difficult issues associated with the birth. Um, and when I came to meet with her, she was, you know, lying in bed. She hadn't stood up. She had lots of lines. Um, she was uncomfortable. Uh, she couldn't speak to anybody, and she had a newborn baby in a bassinet laying right next to her. You know, and it was so moving to be able to communicate with her. You know, she was so vulnerable, and I think we all understand that that un you know feeling of being uncomfortable. Um, and I couldn't imagine being in her situation, and I was so happy that I could help her through it. Um, not only instruct her, but support her and educate her, not only to take care of herself, but to take care of her baby. Um, so those are just a couple of examples. Um, so just to get back to what I was saying, you know, I followed my heart. I did what I loved. I love what I do. And if you follow what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So thank you. Mm -hmm.